Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well. Welcome back to the channel. Oh hi, if you're new, my name's Sophie and today is a very exciting day. I am so excited to sit down and film this video because this video is all about books. So if you've been around here for a while, you know I have loved reading for the longest time and I talk about it here and there but I never really talk about it that much. So I thought it might be a good little idea to do one little video a month where I have free reign to talk about all the books that I want. Before we start the video, I just wanna say I'm sorry if you can hear the outside world doing its thing. It is a Tuesday afternoon, so I have no idea why, but every road out there, and I'm talking about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight roads that I can see, yeah, all have traffic and I'm talking like two miles an hour moving and they've been like that for the last three hours. So if you can hear horns or screeching or anything like that and maybe the tram going by, no you didn't, it's okay. I can't control that. So we're just gonna add it to the elements of the video. Let's dive in and start with what I've read up to now in 2024. So if you've been on my Goodreads, you will or will not know, I have set a target of 24 books in 2024. Up to now, I'm on five. So I'm a little bit behind schedule, but we can make up for it by maybe reading a small book even there. So the first book I read was How to Choose a Guy in 10 Days. It was a cheesy little chick flick type book. There's two girls, they both work in the fashion office. Our main girl has this neighbor who is obviously not the most fashionable. So the two girls set in a challenge to pick someone in the wild as they say, and make them fashionable, make them better looking, make them a 10 out of 10. So she picks her neighbor. As it is a romance, there is a romance story there, and it all goes a bit crazy. So it was a good little read. It wasn't too many pages. It was 250, so it was a nice little, nice little size. I did give that a three out of five stars. It was good. Nice little romance to start the year off. So then after I finished How to Choose a Guy in 10 Days, I dove into Akatar. Yes. I don't know if it was a good move or a bad move because now I'm pretty much obsessed. I've not finished this series yet. I do still have A Court of Silver Flames to go. But since we are recapping what I've read in 2024 up to now, let's recap these ones. So first in the series is A Court of Thorn and Roses. This book gave me Beauty and the Beast vibes. That is all I can say, that's all everybody says online about this book is it's Beauty and the Beast just with a little bit more fantasy, a little bit more adult. Everyone that I spoke to about this book or I've read online was like you need to power through, it's not the best book but the series gets better. I think I'm different, I actually really enjoyed this book. I thought it was a great little stepping stone because this is actually my first fantasy series. I've never read fantasy before so I thought this was like a nice little stepping stone from romance to fantasy, even though this is still romance, it's a nice little door opening into the crazy world. There is a lot of world building in the book, which is obviously needed because it's a fantasy, but I thought it was the perfect amount where you don't get confused. You still enjoy the romance side of it. You obviously step into the new world of fantasy. It was good. The main plot of the story, just wow. Wow, the traffic outside is just, it's just stopped. I think a bus has broke down. Oh my god. Bear with. Yeah, I think the bus has broke down. On a one way road. Oh, he's moving. The bus is moving. Oh no, it was a taxi. <gasps> the taxi broke down in front of a bus. It's moving. Anyway, let's get back to it. The main plot of the story, the last third of the book, is where all the action is. That was a running trait that I got told about reading Sarah J Mass's books is the last 100 pages or so is all the action. She was not lying. All the action is at the back of this book. And it's just, it's just well done. It's really good. I just love it. It then took me into A Court of Mist and Fury. This book online is People's Bible. That's the only thing I've realised about this book. And don't get me wrong, it might be mine. I need to finish the series first. But this one gave me everything that I needed. 
it was politics, it was romance, it was hate, it was story building, it was new world. So in this book, everyone talks about chapter 54 and chapter 55 as like the chapters to read, right? Don't get me wrong, it was everything this book needed, the series needed, it was like putting a big cherry on top of the romance cake, loved it. But chapter 64, that is the action that I needed. That is everything that I needed. If you're on my bookstagram account, you would have seen I posted a reel about it. If not, I'll leave it linked below so you can go watch it. Spoiler free review on that. I was currently on a flight when I was reading that chapter and it started getting good. So I was like, do you know what? I'm gonna film this just because it'll be funny to see my reaction because I'm a very expressionate person, right? I don't know if you've noticed that. So I show my emotions very easily, heart on the sleeve type person, loved it. Then we go on to A Court of Wings and Ruin. This little book is the biggest book I've read ever, point blank. I cried, I laughed, I giggled, I cried some more. I then had a big Cheshire smile on my face at the end. I think that's everything we need in this book. At the end of this video, actually, I'm going to put in a spoiler part of this book. I was listening to it on audio when the main action was going on, the big, the big fight at the end. The thing this whole series is building up to is in this book. It's the big fight. I was actually listening to that part of the, the story on audiobook when I was doing my daily life, basically. I had to meal prep, I had to put some washing away. So you can get to see my raw emotions from this book while doing housework. If you wanna stick around to the end, you can watch it. I will eventually put it on Instagram so you can see it, but it does have spoilers, so I don't know if I want to. We'll see. So three books down, and then we move on to the smallest of the books. This one is A Court of Frost and Starlight. This book, I could have happily gone without. It was a nice little bow tie on top of the parcel that came. It didn't really end any more storylines. It kind of just opened more storylines, which is amazing, here for it. I've easily gone without it. I've read it in like two days because it's not a, a chunky book. It's like 200 and something pages, I think it is. 231 pages, so it's not a lot. And I am the slowest reader possible and I read this in two days, so we're good with that. But yeah, I could have easily gone without this one, but I'm glad I did because this is now gonna lead me into Silver Flames, which I've not read yet. That is on my TBR for April. Let's do a little recap of what I'm thinking of Akatar. Obviously spoiler free, hopefully. So we have Freya, who is our main girl. She is, she is it, she is the girl. I am gonna play devil's advocate, right? And I don't know if this is just because I've been around too many narcissistic men in my little life. I think Tamlin gets a lot more hate than he might deserve. Yes, he did a lot of bad things. But he also did a lot of good things. Going back to this one. Let me know what you think on that. Obviously, each to their own. Everyone's opinion is everyone's opinion. But I think he gets a lot more hate than he might deserve. Yes, he did bad. He did very bad. But we also don't know his full story. There is a lot that we don't know happened from his side of the story. We only ever see Farah's side of the story. We don't see what his is. So I'm interested to see if his story is gonna be one of the new books that she's releasing because again, devil's advocate. I wanna read it. I wanna know what happens to him. I wanna know what is going on in that beautiful spring call that was his. So that is everything I've read up until the end of March, 2024. And now we are in April. Today is April the 2nd. So my April TBR is going to be worked out in this video. As of now, I'm reading on my Kindle. I'm reading Don't Let Me Break. This is a third book in the Don't Let Me series. And this one's, it's a very easy read. It's a very lovable romance. Golden Retriever guy, black cat girl. It's just an easy read compared to a fantasy where you have to build a whole world in your head. This is just two people going about the life. So I'm currently reading this, I'm only like 5% in, I started reading it last night. So this is on the TBR for April, and we also are going to take on The Mighty Court of Silver Flames. This has too many pages for me to even want to look at. It's got 
757. That's a lot, but I want to know. I want to find out what's going on with Nesta. I want to know what's going on with Cassian because me trying to avoid spoilers on reels is, is something else. It's something else. I'm like crazy swiping and trying to avoid it. Yeah, it's not cool. So now we're all up to date on what I've read and what I'm reading. It is now the most exciting part of this video. I have a Waterstones mystery book. So a couple of weeks ago, I had a trip home to visit the family and me and my sister popped into a Waterstones just to browse as you do in a bookstore. So we went in with the intention of buying no more new books. We have everything we need in our TBRs. I've got 30 on my Kindle in my TBR. I've got four on my shelf that I need to read. I didn't need another book. But then I've seen this. I'll pop the picture here. Blind date with a book, it's called. And there was loads of different like, let me see if I can show you. Loads of different books with different little passages, little quotes, different prices, different genres. I was like, do you know what? This will be really good because I'm so indecisive with what I want to read. So I picked up this one. The passage that was on the book that I picked said, it's a romance 18 plus. And the quote goes, maybe you're not meant for me the way I'm meant for you, but I'm going to choose you anyway, over and over again. Do you have any idea what this book is? Because I have absolutely no idea. My sister thinks she knows what it is. I've had this book for about three weeks now, wrapped up, and I have no idea what it is. Are we ready to open it? I'm so excited to open this book. Okay, let's just do it. Let's try not to rip the book. Are we ready? <gasps> no! No. You don't understand. This has actually been on my TBR from day one. Oh my God. I've seen so many people on Goodreads give this book such good reviews. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Yes! If you're not sure what it is, it's Bride by Ali Hazelwood. Please also excuse my nails, by the way. I'm going through a bad nail phase. So what I'm reading is it's like a forced marriage kind of thing or a marriage of convenience. Vampires, mystical, wolf. Oh, but I've just started reading a new book and now I want to read this. I'm going to finish the book I'm reading. Then we'll move on to Bride and then we'll take on the Mammoth book towards the end of the month. I am going to end this video here. I hope you have enjoyed the first installment of Books with Sophie. I will be back possibly next month with updates fully on my reads. If you do watch my videos regularly, I do put in little snippets here and there of what I've been thinking of the books that I'm reading. But I'm hoping that this little series that I'm going to start will work out to plan and you will get one full video once a month, ideally on the first Sunday of every month, if all goes to plan. But don't hold me to that. So if you have enjoyed the video, do give it a like and subscribe and let's go read. I'm aware I look like a crazy person right now. I've just washed my hair. It is Friday the 29th of March and I'm listening to a quarter wing of ruin. This is the spoiler bit, okay? I've literally just been crying because they're in the midst of the, the final battle and these ships are coming over the water and the dad's just been MIA for the last, like, what, three books? Just gave up on the dad, gave up on Lucian. They've just vanished. And they've just turned up and I started crying. <laughs> oh my God. I would normally like sit down and read it, but I've got so much work to do that I need to keep going. So I'm just gonna do my dishes while I cry listening to a book. <laughs> I felt it touch me. And then I was half gone. Nesta. I'm so confused. The cauldron searched for her. Searched for her as the king now sought her. Together, my mate and the High Lord of Day unleashed themselves mm. upon Highburn. Oh, sugary dugary do. Until they paused. Cassian was the distraction, <gasps> while her blow found its mark, then vanished. Cassian did not move, did not dare, for the King of Highburn held my father before him, a sword to his throat. I loved you from the first moment I held you in my arms, and I am, 
I am so sorry, Nesta. My Nesta, I am so sorry for all of it. I heard the crack before I realized what happened. Before I saw the way my father's head twisted, saw the light freeze in his eyes. Nesta made no sound. Showed no reaction as the king of Highburn snapped our father's neck. <laughs> I began screaming. Screaming and thrashing inside the cauldron's grip. Begging it to stop it. To bring him back. To end it. Not 20 feet away, Cassian was on the ground. Wings snapped in spots. <gasps> blood leaking from them. Bone jutted from his thigh. His siphons were dull. Empty. I have no regrets in my life, but this. His voice shook with every word. That we did not have time. Oh. That I did not have time with you, Nesta. She didn't stop him as he leaned up and kissed her, lightly, as much as he could manage. And his hand slid over her back. Together. They'd go together. For a moment, I thought the cauldron had answered my pleas. But as a black blade broke through the king's throat, spraying blood, I realized someone else had. Elaine stepped out of the no! shadow and rammed Truth Teller to the hilt through the back of the king's neck as she snarled in his ear, Don't you touch my <gasps> sister. No! Satisfy 